Hello everybody, welcome to Filmmaking Today, Bojan Dulabik here. So, would you like to turn your regular slider into a motorized one for only 50 bucks? Stay tuned. So, this is the Yelungu Auto Dolly L4. This is what the packaging looks like, very simple, nothing really on it, except for the front, obviously. So, let's open up the puppy and see what comes inside. So, inside you are greeted with a few things. First of all, you've got the remote control right here. And uh, it's a very simple one, just three buttons basically, and we'll go over that in just a minute. Next, you have the manual. And uh, this is actually pretty cool. It'll, it tells you quite a few th good, good things. Uh, next one, you have the charging cable. So this is a USB cable because the battery is actually built in and this is how you charge it. So it's a USB type A on one end and micro USB on the other end. Very standard cable. And uh, so here's the main device. First of all, here's the uh, little adapter if you want to mount different uh, things to it. Uh, so you've got a 3 8 and a quarter inch, I believe, depending on what it is that you're mounting onto it. You've got the two holes right here. So let's put that to the side and then you have also the spare rubber and uh, this piece right here. And this is what it all looks like. Here's the main device. Uh, as you can see, just like in Gen 1, you can uh, move the feet around so you can create all kinds of angles. You can go around, you can do straight, you know, anything. It's, it's a lot bulkier from the first one and it's definitely a, a bigger, there's no doubt about that. One thing that you may notice the difference between this and the first gen are the rubber feet here. This is actually for a slider. So you put that on a slider and you can actually extend this piece if the slider is bigger. The tubes on the slider have to be a minimum of eight centimeters apart, which is about 3.1 inches. Now, if we take a look at this side here, there's two buttons. One is the speed button, which can also be controlled from the remote. Right now you see one light uh, on the green light. That's speed one, there's speed two, and then here's speed three. One is the slowest, three is the fastest. And then the other button here is if you wanna change the direction to go from left to right or vice versa. Here is the other side. You have the USB plug that's used to charge the device and just the on off switch to obviously turn it on and off. Nothing else on this side. Now when it comes to the actual device, the movement itself, it's actually very smooth. It has to be obviously on a smooth surface, you know, table, anything like that will work just fine. Carpets will work if it's not too tall, if it's, um, you know, just a low-key carpet that will work as well, just like Gen 1. Although I do find this device smoother than Gen 1. Um, I don't know if it's the extra weight that helps with that but I find that I am using a lot less stabilization in post when I work with this device although it's still needed depending on what the situation is but less than the first generation for sure. Now the wheels can be adjusted in many different ways and as you can see it makes for some really interesting shots. Here's the remote and as you can see there's three buttons. This is the on off button. This one changes the directions and then this one increases or decreases the speed. Very simple. And this is the LED light that will show you if the battery is low. It will just blink uh, rapidly. This is the battery. It's a CR2032, which is readily available online or at a lot of stores. Now here's a speed comparison between the three different speeds. At the top you have the fastest speed, which is 2.5 centimeters per second, which is about an inch per second. In the middle it's two centimeters and at the bottom it is 1.5 centimeters per second. Now just to give you an idea Gen 1 has one speed which is basically the fastest speed here which is 2.5 centimeters so you are getting two slower speeds with this generation. And that is actually a really really big advantage of this one compared to the first generation. The fact that you can actually slow it down which makes these kinds of shots much more interesting. With the first generation, this kind of a shot would have been too fast, right? So that was one of the problems I had when it comes to uh, these close-up shots of objects. It just it was just too fast, and it it just didn't look good. 
in my opinion. Also with all of these shots I did not have to apply any stabilization in post. This is what it looks like from the camera. Now I did color graded so there's that but I did not apply any stabilization. Now that is a huge advantage compared to the first one. In the first video you will see a before and after comparison where I had to apply a lot of stabilization to make one of these shots look good. You don't have to do it with this one. Here's also video of the first gen and as you can see that one is a lot smaller, lighter than, than this one. This one is definitely much bulkier compared to the first one which has its advantages. Yes, it's not as portable perhaps as the first one but I do believe it stabilizes or it grounds this one much more than the first gen. Now here's an example of a shot where I had the slider on an actual manual slider as you can see right here and you know it works fine it just goes from left to right right to left whichever way you decide to go and it works just fine couldn't be easier when it comes to that you literally just put the damn thing on there make sure you adjust the wheels make sure they are straight that's the only thing to keep in mind because you don't want the thing to fall off or anything like that. Other than that, you get beautiful shots like this. And, you know, with some of them, you might have to apply a little bit of stabilization. That just depends on your slider, how well it's leveled and those kinds of things. But other than that, it's great. And here are some shots outside. And this is really where this thing shines. I mean, of course, it depends what you are filming, but the, these kinds of shots really look nice and they enhance your production whether you're doing a wedding whether you're doing a indie project I mean this type of a shot would be great for a horror film you know zombie flick or something like that this would definitely work for sure so that's it guys I hope you found this video very useful as you can see you can do a lot with this uh, this thing right here you know generation one was great and you know for I think it retails at 35 30 dollars around there it's still a great device, right? But this guy, this guy takes it to the next level. Just the fact that you have the three speeds, uh, the fact that you can obviously uh, put this on uh, on a slider. I mean, it really uh, puts it on the next level, right? And uh, and obviously having the remote control, so you don't have to be, you know, physically near the device. Um, only thing about that is um, I have had it a few times where I. Put this device on a slider and the wheels weren't perfectly straight right and it started to go a little wobbly and it, it almost fell off right so you know be careful about that if you have your slider high up you know and you you put this thing on there and you walk away and you uh, start it up with the remote it could fall off you don't want that so just be careful about that right um, you know aside from that like I said it's a great device it uh, definitely uh, serves a purpose. Um, one thing that I have noticed, when you put this on a slider, right, and uh, you put it to the, the max speed, the fastest speed, if you're taking uh, landscape shots, you're really not gonna notice a big of a difference, right? It just doesn't move fast enough for you to actually notice a difference. But if you are getting medium to close-up shots, you know, uh, of whatever it is an object there you know whatever it is you'll definitely notice the difference there right so just something to keep in mind also another thing to keep in mind this is the ball head that I got oh, holding it back uh, upside down there you go uh, this is the ball head that I got for this guy it's the um, Endor Endor so I hope that's what it's pronounced um, I would recommend to get this guy for for this device uh, for Gen 1 I got just a cheapo ball head right uh, it was a $10 actually probably $8 small ball head you, you can see it in the review and you know it works fine and you can certainly use it for this guy but uh, you know I definitely re recommend this one here because it's uh, it's more sturdy it just gives you a lot more options you know you do have um, this um, you know, removable little guy here that you obviously mount to the bottom of the camera. You know, it, you have just a lot more um, freedom with this guy. And it's not much more. I mean, yes, it's more. You're looking at probably 20, 25 bucks versus the 8 to 10. So, yeah, it's more than doubling the price. But 
you know, it's not the end of the world. We're not talking hundreds of dollars here. So um, links to everything will be in the description. As always, check those out. So yeah, that's it guys. All in all, I think this is a great device. It definitely serves a purpose. Uh, product photography, like I said, uh, close to uh, medium to close uh, shots, landscape shots, you know, that kind of stuff. I think, I think you're going to have a great time with that. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon to be notified of future videos. Stay tuned for more. Tell your friends, share this video, all that good stuff. Thanks, guys. Stay tuned.